Determination for what? Title of the sermon today. My unstoppable determination. Think about that. What is it that you want? And it seems that I don't care how bad you don't want to do it, you just cannot put it down. Anybody got something like that in their life? Oh, yeah. Right uh, on, uh, uh, <laughs> you married to us, I can't help you. <laughs> I can't help you. You got to deal with God on that. Let me stop messing with her. She's got a good husband. All, all the besides, she has a good husband. He yes, just don't know how good he is yet. But she has the patience to wait on him. Amen. Amen. I saw in his eyes the love that he has for that woman. Yes, he do. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody say in due season. In due season. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But there is a saying. It says if you love something, what? Say it all. And if it was meant to be, and if it comes back, it was meant to be. Let me try that one more. If you love something, say it free. Like it, my Lord. Say I said, if you love something, all right, all right. go the other way. And if God bring it back to you, it's a better day. Amen. How great is our God. Yes. Amen. How great. See, even I, even I try. Is our God. How great, how great yes, sir. is our God. Come on, church. Come on, come on, come on. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will sing how great, how great is our God. I got it. Jesus. Let God 
somebody in the house who had to give me a sentence of without God because I when I came up here I could not afford to be without God and I, and I felt even now my knees are shaking as much as I preach I still don't trust myself so I don't write anything down I trust God to deliver unto you what he has for you father we thank you right now in the name of Jesus we give you all the honor and all the glory because there's none like you go to hell Turn that off because you found the money back there. There's none like you, Lord. You are truly the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, the one true and living God. Lord, we have come into this place today and we've had a joyful time. But if we don't leave here 
with something in our spirit that makes us feel brand new, what was it all for? The joy without the word is no better than the word without the joy. I thank you right now, Lord. I thank you for your holiness. I thank you for holding me. I thank you, Lord, for, for letting me know where there, where there is honor. You're honoring because God held you up when you couldn't hold yourself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now that I know Jesus is real, I got to find an unstoppable, uh, unstoppable determination not to just live with him, but in living with him, live for God. No, it, it does not say I'm living with Jesus. It does not say I'm walking with Jesus if I'm not living for God. My unstoppable determination for what? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. You have an unstoppable determination. What is it? Huh. Some of y'all too embarrassed to say. But today, we're going to let you keep that thing you desire if it lines up with God. And if it don't line up with God, you're going to see the value in your determination seeking God with an unstoppable quest. With an unstoppable quest with an unstoppable quest. Father, we thank you in advance. We're going to give you a shout out. We're going to give you a praise because we know you're going to do what you came to do. Holy Ghost. We're going to give you a shout out. Hallelujah. We're going to give you a praise because we know you're going to do what you came to do. Holy Ghost. Amen. Remain standing as I read the word of God today. And the word of God reads, Philipp, verse Philippians, chapter 1, verse 20 through verse 26, softly. For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ whether I live or die. For me, living means living for Christ. And dying is even better. But if I live, I can do, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. So I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go and be with Christ. Which would be far better for me. But for your sakes, it is better that I continue to live. Knowing this, I have convinced, I am convinced that I will remain alive so I can continue to help all of you grow and experience the joy of your faith. And when I come to you again, you will have even more reason to take pride in Christ Jesus because of what he is doing through me. We thank you for your word. Holy Ghost. You may be seated. You may be seated. Time of our sermon today, if you're taking notes, I need you to get a pen and don't fill in the blank yet because you uh, uh, some people are gonna put in God. Some people are gonna tell a lie and put in Jesus. So I don't want you to fill the blank in until we get through. Because the blank is going to represent what I need in order to be with Jesus. The blank is going to represent what I need in order to be with God. Amen? Amen. Uh, I, my unstoppable determination for, I need my minister, somebody go get my minister. My unstoppable determination for what? All right. Okay. So, for I am full. I, for I fully expect and hope 
that I will never be ashamed, but I will continue to be bold for Christ. The Lord told us last week, he told everyone in the church, what is it that you want out of your life? And he said, if you forsake it, did you forsake him for seven days? <laughs> he said, if you forsake it for seven days, did you forsake it for seven days? No. Did you forsake it for seven days? We'll start over this week, okay? <laughs> did you forsake it for seven days? You didn't? You tried. Okay, that's good, that's good. It's gone. It's gone. Why? Why is it gone? Because they're living by the spirit and what? Truth. God's going to take it away just because you told the truth about the battle at hand. Come on, Holy Ghost. Here we are, and you are living a life a life that says I, 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 I should be sick. A life that says, I, in some cases, I should be dead. A life that says, in some cases, um, I, I should be hospitalized. A life that, in some cases, said, I should not be what God has me. What God, I should not be doing what God has me doing. A life that says, I am everything but what it looks like I should be. I am everything. But, it, but what it looks like, I should be. Make sense? The truth be told, if somebody knew your truth, they wouldn't know, they wouldn't think that you are what you look like. Huh? I am exactly what God want, wants me to be. And I want to give you confidence today. You are exactly what and where God wants you to be. Got a sister right here. Two years ago, if you told her that in 2016 she was gonna be marrying a good man, she would look at you and told you you were slap crazy because of the turmoil that was in her life. Am I right? Am I right? So but at that time she was exactly where God wanted her to be because now, because she's been there, she can appreciate what God has for her. Come on now. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because she was what she was two years, two years ago, without being there, this would just be another guy. Amen. But because of where she was, she checked out all the ingredients. She said, uh, does he have a history of running around? Does he have a history of cheating? Does he have a history of, of beating on women? Does he have a history of... And then she only went to one place to find out that he didn't have a history like that. She found out he had a history of going to church every Sunday. Oh, right. glory to God. She found out he had a history of going where? Church. Not following her to church, but leading her to church. She found out that he had... It's all right if I use your business today. Uh, it's all right. I'm going to do it anyway. But anyway. It's all right. She found out... You're going to make people leave this church, man. You just don't know. They ain't leaving me, they're leaving God. <laughs> but she found out he had a history. How did she find out he didn't have a history of all those negative things? Because he had a history of doing something for God. And not because of her. I made a mistake with some of y'all ladies. I told you, if you don't go to church, don't have nothing to do with it. So y'all made him a church man. <laughs> So you can have something to do with it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so y'all made him a tax man so you can have something to do with it. But he would um, only, when you make somebody into something, you not being God, is not going to last. When you make somebody into something, you not being God, is not going to work. Mm. <laughs> but yet I will still yet trust who? For I, am, I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed. That I will continue to be bold for Christ. And I told you this morning, oh y'all Mr. Powerful Sermon this morning. I don't know how God going to back that sermon up with a sermon like this. Because that sermon this morning was, huh, was it? Oh my God. Fearing the peace of God. Oh my God. Y'all need to go to YouTube because I ain't got time to preach it right now. It says, 
I will continue to be bold. Now that I know that God has called me and put me in the second heaven. Say in the second heaven. In the second heaven. Y'all gonna hear this for a little while. When God give me something as revelatory as the three heavens, I gotta ride it. I gotta ride it until it gets embedded in your spirit. I want you to repeat after me. First heaven. First heaven. In the earth. In the earth. Heaven on me. Heaven on me. Second heaven. Second heaven. In heaven. In heaven. On the earth. On the earth. Y'all got that? Yes, sir. So when I'm the first heaven is when I'm in the earth and heaven on me, that means I go in and out of the spirit realm. Sometimes I'm holy and sometimes I'm acting like a nut. Because I'm in the first heaven. I'm still in the what? Earth. And heaven is on me, training me how to live where? In heaven. Heaven is on me, trying to train me how to live in what? Heaven. So it's training me how to live in heaven. Once it trains me how to live in heaven, before it let me come to heaven, it tests what I have learned right here on earth. So I, I'm in heaven, but yet I'm still on the earth. Amen. And once I succeed in living in heaven on the earth, now I'm ready to live with my father forevermore. She said, God, think, Bishop, that's so simple. Is it simple? Isn't that simple? All, I mean, all these deep people that gave me all these old deep revelatory things about the first heaven means and the second heaven means and the third heaven means. What does that have to do with me? That's what I need to know. I need to know what does the first heaven have to do with me? What it has to do with me is that I'm in the earth. And heaven is on me, training me how to live in heaven. So while I'm in training, I go in and out. Y'all know when you y'all know when you were in school and you took a test, Deja? Yeah. You didn't get all the answers right. But the more you studied, the more you got the answers right. But even with all the studying, sometimes you still had one or two wrong what? Answers. Because you were still in the class and not of the class. <laughs> Just stay with me because I ain't going to lose you. I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ whether I live or die. It don't matter no more. I think in a situation I think at times I would try to commit suicide. I really do. Unaware. Once I found out how good God was, I said, you know what? I'm doing everything that God wants me to do. Let God just take me out of here. Get this pressure off me. But then, it says that once you realize how good God is, you want to be with who? Okay, y'all women, act like y'all, when y'all find a good man, you want to be with a good man, right? So if you find a good God, who you want to be with? Hello, somebody. So here it is, and it says, I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ whether I live or die. For me, living means living for Christ. My unstoppable determination is for what? Huh? Living with Christ? No. And it says, dying is even better. Meaning what? If I die, I won't be with Christ. I'll be with God and Christ. One, I'm living for Christ. The other one, I'm with Christ and God. So it says, dying is even better. But I live, but if I live, I can, do, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. So God will, the pastor I was trying to check out, he wouldn't let me go, because I can do more fruitful work living than they did. Oh, I don't want nobody. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me do this. I, I, I see y'all already. Y'all know Bishop was trying to commit suicide. No, I was not trying to commit suicide. <laughs> I said that there was a time in my life I was all right with leaving here, so some of the things that I was doing, I didn't care. And in, 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 a, in, a, in a backwards way, hoping that it took me out of here. Y'all understand now? I understand. Huh? I understand. That's because God was reshaping my thinking 
And he showed me how good he was. And when he showed me how good he was, he had to see how bad I wanted to be with him. Amen. How bad do you want to be with God? How bad do you, would, do you want to be with God? If God told you to do something that was going to cause you to die, most of y'all, because you think living here is all there is, will not do it because you're scared of what? Dying. But here I was, I said, okay, Lord, that, that what you want me to do? Let's go. Hopefully it'll take me out of here so I can be with you all the time. Amen. My Lord. So in the backwards way, there was nothing I wouldn't do for God, whether it was living or what? Dying. But I learned, I'm learning, saints. I'm learning. And I, I really learned this week. I don't know who's going to wake up with Jesus this week. But the whole wake up with Jesus all week was about deliverance. All week long, it was about deliverance. It was so powerful about deliverance, I ain't never heard her ask, what should I do about what I'm going through? Because she felt the power of what? Deliverance. When you don't feel the power of deliverance, you don't ask questions about how to be delivered out of something in your life. But because she felt the power of deliverance, she asked in front of people all over the country, <laughs> how do I deal with this? Y'all just stay with me. I'm going to help you out here. He said, but if I live, I can, be, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. So if he know I am a fruit bearer, he ain't going to let me down. No matter how bad I want to. Y'all get this? But at the same time, I don't stop chasing after the things of God. It is so, I don't want to listen, it is so shameful unto me to know people who God has blessed. And as soon as God bless us, the one that bless us, we put him as the afterthought. Now I got two jobs. But uh, I can't do both the jobs and, 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 and go to church, so church got to, you know, take a back seat. I wouldn't have the two jobs without God. So if I got the two jobs and I stopped going to church, that means I might not lose one, but I might lose both. Y'all hear it? Yes, sir. And you're like, but y'all understand what I'm saying here? We, we, we don't keep the main thing the main thing. We start minding in the majors and, and, and majoring in the minors. The main thing is Jesus Christ. The main thing is, Bishop, you just got so many ministry going on. Because I'm a fruit bearer. So since God wouldn't let me die, I'm going to do what, he, what makes me feel good. And what makes me feel good? Bringing folk to Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't nothing make me feel at. Oh my God, we had a lady. Oh, we got a lady on on, on, on on Facebook Live. She's from South Texas. Now here y'all, here we are today. Church half empty. Normally we y'all know we on full on Sundays. Church half empty. We got a lady right now, dying to be here. What did she say? Anna what did she say? She, she, she said, I wish I lived where y'all church at. Hmm. She on everything I do. She's right there. She did, and then in the same setting, she came back and said, man, I wish I could, live, I, I wish I could move to Florida. First, she said, I wish I lived where your church at. Then she said, I wish I could move to Florida because of the ministry. Yeah. And here we are. In the midst of it. In the midst of it. I walked to the church the other night to teach Bible study. Who watched it on Facebook Live? Y'all saw them traditional folk up in there? By the time I got through, they were they was, they was enjoying church. And I went and talked to the lady on Saturday. Was it yesterday? Friday. I went and talked to the, one of the pastors Friday. She said, we have never had that much fun in Bible study. Why? That means they do, they study, but there is no joy. And when there is no joy, there is no spirit of Jesus. When there's the spirit of Jesus, there's always going to be joy on, I'm sorry, Jesus on. 
Wherever there's the spirit of Jesus, there's going to be joy. And joy is J-O-Y. Joy on you. Jesus on you. So she said, she said, so now she wants me to come back and do a two-night revival. No, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, it ain't like that. I mean, I, this is my home. This is my home. Amen. I love, I love this. And then I, I'm, I'm tired of, I'm tired of her trying to make me look like I'm a big timer. Minister Nisha always been trying to make me and first lady look like we big timers. Our pastor and elect lady all the way out of my land of Florida. We two streets over. <laughs> we grew up. I grew up on 19th Avenue, and she grew up on 20th, right? 20th Avenue. Y'all hear me? We two, we grew up two, I used to knock on this door and pick at the people for beating drums in the church. You used to knock on the door and say, Holy Roller, and, and, and open the door and say, Holy Roller, and run down the street. I'm just waiting for one little kid to run by here one Thursday night and say, Holy Roller, and run down the street. But this is what I need you to understand tonight. But if I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. So I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between two desires, living and dying. Hello, somebody. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. But for your sakes, it is better that I continue to live, or is it? Or is it? Why am I living when, I'm the only, when there's only eight of us in Bible study and we, we got 60 members on the roster? Or is it? I like it when they get quiet. I like it because either they fit the leave or they gonna or they get ready to get devoted. That's how that's how you Amen. they either get ready to leave or they ever they get ready to be. What is our anybody remember what our theme for the year is? Faithfully. Faithfully committed. 2017. We don't want just commitment, we want faithful commitment. We want commitment that moves God. Amen. But if I live, I can do, I can, it says, I'm torn between two desires. I long to go be with Christ, which will be far better for me, but for your sakes, it is better that I continue to live. Knowing this, I am convinced I will remain alive so I can continue to help all of you grow and experience the joy, joy of your faith. So now God is telling me, Bishop, you might as well give it up. I ain't going to take you away from them. You might as well put it down. You might as well let it go. Meaning what? The thought of not being here on earth. Hello, somebody. I have given you an assignment on not suicide. I promise you. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know what I do. But I promise y'all, if she leave, I'm checking in. <laughs> let y'all know if she leave, I'm checking in. I'll tell y'all that. I'm going to make it look like an accident, but I... Y'all know. Bitch, check me. <laughs> but knowing this, I am convinced that I will remain alive so I can continue to help all of you grow and experience the joy of your faith. And when I come to you again, you will, be, you will have even more reason to take pride in Jesus Christ because of what he is doing through me. Can I talk to you? This is, one of these, this, this is New Year's morning, right? I'll give you 10 minutes and I'll have you out of here. Because the golfers come on at 1 o'clock. They're going to Shane had the best record in football and number of the Super Bowl, but that's all right. Here we go. As I get to the place of understanding who God is, and last week, y'all don't even understand how many people was here Monday night? That sermon, first of all, God told us something Sunday. Then that sermon, Monday night, Jesus is real. Do y'all realize, I think when we started it, we had like 40 or 50 hits. Over 200 people don't watch that sermon. That's the most watched sermon I've ever put on YouTube. You hear me? Why? That was a life-changing sermon. I'm going to talk to you. Jesus got to, got to become real to you. He's got to become real to you. And so now you don't worry about dying. Why you don't worry about dying? Come here, man of God. When Jesus becomes real to you, you don't worry about dying. 
Why? I can be with God here and there. Y'all got that? When Jesus ain't real to me, I think I got to leave here to go there to be with God. But when Jesus is real to me, Jesus was with God here. What is the evidence that Jesus with God was with God here? Because God resurrected him. If he had not been with God here, there would not have been a what? Resurrection. So it don't even matter no more. Whether I'm here or there, I am with God. Why? Because Jesus had become real to me. So I don't worry about dying no more. Now that I don't worry about dying, and I know I'm in the presence of God, as we learned this morning, I'm not afraid no longer of godly peace. I'm not afraid no longer of godly peace. To give you a sample of the sermon this morning, because you need this for, to wrap this sermon up. This man of God, he's a man. You stole it, man. <laughs> oh, no, man. You, I look like the deacon, and you look like the pastor today. But this man of God, here he is, walking in godly what? Peace. And here I come. Here I come. He over there minding his business. Mind his own business, enjoying the word. But I done looked over that two or three times. My wife ain't paying attention to the sermon. So now, what you doing looking at my wife that she came to the sermon? This man, is, this man is in a peaceful place. But here I come with my ungodliness. Here I come with my foolishness. Here I come trying to draw him out of the presence of God. Why? The only reason I'm worried about him looking, y'all want to hit the truth. I want to make sure y'all get this. I want you to miss this because I'm going to wake the Cleo and get the truth. I'm sorry, she got one of the bags. Let her go. Come on, y'all talk to me. Okay, that's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't want you to miss this. The only reason that I create havoc, why am I creating havoc? The only reason I create havoc and worry about him. Looking at my wife, because I know when she ain't looking, I'm looking at somebody else's wife. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. oh, Bishop. Uh -oh. I thought, uh, Bishop, I know you done tore up your player card, but come on, Bishop. <laughs> Anytime there is havoc and you are at peace, ladies. He has an agenda. I'm being like Steve, I'm giving y'all my Steve Harvey moment. Anytime this man was over there enjoying the word because my wife wasn't paying attention, I got to create habit because those who cheat always want to be. Can I say it? Tell it, snitch. Oh, can I say it? They always want eyes on them from the one they cheat with and the one they're with. Y'all hear this? Yeah. He said, he's gone sit down because you, 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 you're having too many flashbacks right now. <laughs> but I'm saying all this to say something, saints. I'm saying all this to say, I'm trying to get you to get rid of the foolishness out of your life. You don't even know how messed up your life is when I can't even preach without worrying about who she looking at. I can't even preach without worrying about where she going. I can't even preach without worrying about why he looking over there. It's because I got my eyes. It's because my unstoppable determination is on everything but holiness. When my unstoppable determination is tied to holiness, all that matters to me is Jesus and to Jesus getting to God. And who I take with me, glory be to God. Who don't want to go and God tell me to drop him, hello, thank heaven. You hear me? Y'all going to have to learn how to thank heaven. Amen. See, the reason you can't get beyond your situation, because you rather tell somebody to go to hell than tell them thank you heaven. Uh -oh. And when you tell somebody to go to hell, now your hell continues. Will. So you think heaven. You hear what I'm trying to tell you? You get to the place where you think what? Heaven. Thank heaven. 
for the peace that you're about to embark on in the year 2017. Embrace it. The unstoppable, what is, what is, what, is, what was the title? Unstoppable, unstoppable determination. The unstoppable determination is either sin or holiness. I will do nothing. I will let nothing stop me from getting to the holy places of God. I will let nothing stop me from getting to the holy places of God. Not wife, not children, not enemies, not friends, not spouses. The unstoppable determination. What's more important to you? 2017. I want you to be free. I want you to go to the second heaven. Somebody say second heaven. Second when, I'm, when I go to the second heaven, that means I'm no longer in the earth and heaven is on me. That means I am in heaven on the earth. Y'all got this? Do y'all understand this? Yes, sir. Have I left y'all? No, sir. And that should become the most important thing to me. Learning how they live in heaven. The, the most real thing, the most real thing to a five, six-year-old child, seven-year-old child is not Jesus. The first thing that becomes real that is spiritual unto children is not Jesus. It's not even God. The first thing that becomes real that is spiritual unto children is heaven. I want to go to what? Be good so you can go to... And so now that's the first real thing that comes to me. And it's the first place Satan attacks. It is the first place Satan attacks. I'm going to leave you with this. Because the, the day I, I came here because I preached hard this morning. But I came here today to make you think. You need to be not committed. You are committed to stuff that is not of God. But I need you to become faithfully committed to the spirit of Jesus. I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about literally to the, his spirit. Faithfully committed to putting the, his spirit on display. Not some of the time, but what? All the time. And when I can put his spirit on display, that's when I'm in heaven on earth. That's when I'm in heaven on earth. And if how, how do I know? How do I know I can do it? Anybody know how you know you can do it? Jesus. And then God said, even greater works. Then he did, you said, well, why? Because I'm gonna let you talk to the to the to the to the chosen and the lost. Jesus only, only ministered to the chosen. He only ministered to the Jews. Oh, he spoke to the, to the Samaritan woman, but his primary ministry was unto who? The Jews. The chosen. God said, even greater work, I'm on, even greater responsibility I'm going to give unto you. I'm going to let you speak to the chosen, which are the Jews, and the lost, which are the Gentiles. Because I'm going to allow you to go to the second heaven. And when you get to the second heaven, it's going to be so good. I wish I had a keyboard player right now. When you get to the second heaven, it's going to be so good. So you want to lead this earth for real, for real. Come on, somebody. All I want to do is get up and lead. Lord, take me up out of here. Lord, I, I, I know my mama been telling me, my friend been telling me, if I keep doing these drugs, I'm going to die. So, Lord, let's go do some drugs so I can get up out of here. That's how stupid we are. That's how we get caught up in our stinking thinking. Thank you, thank you, woman of God. Stinking thinking. Stinking, stinking. Save it on the fish. Jesus. It ain't the mic. You get caught up. When you first get into the second heaven, 
you get caught up in trying to leave here unaware. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You get caught up in trying to leave here unaware. I'm trying to put you down on game. <laughs> she always been like that, y'all. This one I can't handle. I really, really, literally, I can't handle her. Out of all my kids, I can, I can, I can deal with all. I can't handle this. So I don't fool with. I give it to her mom. Can't handle that. She just, she just, she, she just, every, she just got a place right there. That I don't know about. But what I'm trying to say to you, for real, for real, don't get set up. God is bringing you are. Why am I in so much pain? I need, I need you to feel what I'm saying this morning. Why am I in so much pain? Because there's a transition taking place. Hurry up. You heard a baby. You bring a baby because the baby part of the demonstration. I'm all actually fine. You all right? You all right? What you worried about? Ain't nobody looking. You married. <laughs> <laughs> what you worried about? And I'm like, you, she married. But listen, God said, I can't. Hey, sugar. I see. God said, I came with a sword. God said, I came with a sword. Man, one of the man. Come here, Angel. Give it to the niece. Give it to the niece. God said, listen to me. Listen to me. God said I came with a sword. Come here, man of God. God said I came with a sword. Now, Satan comes with a sword. He stabs you, lay down on the bench. And you die. Satan comes with a sword. He stabs you and you do what? Why do you get scared? Jesus said, I didn't come to forgive. I didn't come to bring peace. I came with a sword. So, I ain't got to worry about dying if Jesus got the sword. Why? Because he's not the devil. The devil is the one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So, what is Jesus going to do with the sword? He's going to keep me from getting comfortable where I'm not a citizen. Listen, grab, grab, grab your Bible. I'm, I'm going to take some real quick. Grab your Bible. Go to Philippians 1 and 27. I'm through. I'm through. Grab your Bible. So, now, I'm sticking her. But she ain't going to die. Why? Why is, why is she not going to die? Because Jesus is not Satan. He's only going to cause her pain so she won't fall in love with staying here. Okay. My Lord. He's only going to cause her pain. So as I'm transitioning from the first heaven to the second heaven, what's happening? I'm going through purity, look like hell, but really I need to be saying, thank heaven. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. She went through purity, hell, having a baby. But when the baby came out, she said, thank heaven. My Lord. Not for the baby, but that the pain is so for her. <laughs> she thanked God for the baby, but she thanked heaven that the pain was gone. Yes, Lord. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Satan, if he, stick, if he got a sword, he's going to kill you with it. If Jesus has a sword, he's going to poke you. Only to make you uncomfortable. Read, woman of God. See, because he don't want you to get comfortable with him because you are not from here. Read, woman of God. Above all, Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven. You must live as what? Citizens, citizens of, of heaven. heaven. Mm -hmm. So now, I am leaving the first heaven because when I was in the earth, heaven was on me, teaching me how to live in the second heaven. So now when I get to this scripture right here, now that I would be hearing the scripture, Unless I was in the, I wouldn't be hearing the scripture, y'all. I'm telling all of you, you wouldn't be hearing the scripture. Read it again, woman of God. Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven. Why? Because I'm in the second heaven on earth. I got it. You go sit down, man of God. Amen. One more time, woman of God. Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven. Conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. Conducting yourselves in a manner that when you were in the earth and heaven was on you, it taught you how to live in the second heaven. Mm. So now I'm, I'm leaving the first heaven. What's the problem with leaving the first heaven? 
My mom ain't saved. I gotta leave. But children, but children, 27, 29, 30, they ain't saved. I gotta leave them. Hmm? My husband ain't saved. My wife ain't saved. I gotta what? Leave them. I do I? I do I? No. I, wait a minute, let me tell you something. Wait a minute. When I get to the second heaven, I need y'all to hear this. I, I, I want you to hear this. My unstoppable determination for what? For sin or for holiness? I need an unstoppable determination for holiness or sin? Holiness. But if I do not want to leave what is sinful in order to get to the second heaven, my unstoppable determination is for sin. God. If I do not want to leave, my mama is sinful, my daddy is sinful, my children and they sinful. To be with God, that means they are more important than God. And if I know they're sinning, that means I'd rather live in sin than go to holiness and be with God. My God. Oh, Jesus. My, God. my unstoppable determination is for what? Sinful people. Are the holiness of God. Free woman of God. Whether I come and see you again. Whether I come and poke you again. Or only hear about you. Or only hear about you. I will know that you are standing together with one spirit and one purpose. I will know that you are standing together with one spirit and one purpose. Because you know what? I have finally got to my utmost, living my utmost for his highest. I have finally got to the place. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Huh? I have finally got to the place. I'm not concerned about living to go be with God. Now that I know Jesus is real, I'm going to be with him here and there. So now all I'm concerned about is living my utmost for his highest. Unstoppable determination for what? Now you fill in the blank. Sin or holiness. And if it's sin, tell the truth. So God, like this brother right here, he told the truth. And I promise you, if he go home and he pray for one hour, that thing he don't want he don't want in his life, it shall be gone. I promise you what he said he could not forsake. If he go home and he don't eat for one hour and pray unto the Lord, it's gone. Why? Not because he did not forsake it, but he told the truth about it. Meaning what? He's more concerned about holiness than sin. If y'all wanted a happy message, a shouting message, y'all should have came the first time. Deep, Bishop. It's deep. Taking it in. It's deep. It's deep. My question to you one more time. Jesus, all the pain that you're going through, you ain't got to worry about dying if you know Jesus because he is not the one to come kill, steal, and destroy. But then Satan will convince you, he tired of you now. That's why it's hurting so bad. No, it's hurting so bad because you are giving your birth out of the, out of the world into the second heaven. Amen. My Lord. And God. Uh, why did God allow the second heaven? Anybody know? Huh? Because he wanted you to know you ain't going to fool him like Lucifer did. He said, so before, even though I know you're ready for heaven, I got to let you know you know you're ready. So I'm going to create a second heaven so you can practice on living in heaven. I'm going to create a second heaven so you can practice while you die, while you're on the earth, not in it no more, but you're on the earth because you're in where? Heaven. But, why, but I'm gonna, while you're in heaven, but yet on the earth, you're going to live as they do in heaven because when you were in the earth, heaven was on you and it taught you how to live in heaven. That was a close-up too. <laughs> Very anointed. <laughs> Amen. You'll make me see. I'm through. Minister Joyce shouting, the Holy Spirit, holy happy. Give me a hallelujah, Minister Joyce. Bishop, you don't understand. 
What you say? What you say in the morning? The struggle is real. What struggle? <laughs> <laughs> The struggle is real. But see, the word kept her kept, kept alive, kept her woke. Did y'all understand? Anybody feel this since the day? Did you feel it? That's why I say I ain't got a word. Neil. Neil. See, I told you I ain't got a word. Was it real today, Neil? Huh? I told you I ain't got a word about it coming back. When the word is right, huh? See, the first thing you have to do for the word to be right, you got to get all eyes off you. And prompt God up and not yourself. Amen. Amen. That's why I let her come up here and sing, so y'all can stop looking at me and look at her. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand, praise everybody. So my question to you today: Go home, fill this out. My unstoppable determination is for holiness, and then put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and write the fruits of the spirit down, and hang it on your wall, and you shall get there. My unstoppable determination is for holiness. So you go home and you write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you, if anybody want a paper, a blank paper? Because you don't roll on yours, I got some more. Y'all hear me? And you put this somewhere where you can read it every day. And I promise you, I promise you, you will enjoy the second heaven. You're there. Why? Because God, the word, I didn't tell you, read that first verse, 20, read 26 and 27 again, woman God. Look at what the first verse told you. Huh? Read 27. The struggle continues. <laughs> Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourself in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. Okay. The if he wouldn't be telling you to live as citizens if you were not somewhere to live that way. Amen? Amen? Above all, now that you're here in the second heaven, live as citizens. How do I do it? I take this on my refrigerator. I put my unstoppable determination for holiness. And nine fruits of the spirit. And I live according to this. That's You want a Bible? The nine fruits of the spirit need to become your Bible. There is no, there is no not knowing Jesus. If you live a court, I'm gonna tell you something. If you go out there and you worship that tree, unaware of the nine fruits of the spirit, and you live according to the nine fruits of the spirit, you can't help but be Jesus. You can't help but be without anybody taking them to you. Your spirit gonna take you there. Everybody stand up. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, Lord, for this piercing word. Ah, for New Year's Day, Lord, they, they were looking for they were looking for the cars and the houses and the financial blessings. But Lord, you came today and you gave us what matters to us at the Spirit of Jesus. You gave us an awareness of the power of desiring to be holy. We thank you, Lord. Everybody repeat after me. Father, Father, the time is now. The time is now. Not because I'm all that. Not because I'm all that. Not because I'm all right. Not because I'm all right. And especially not because I'm all wrong. Especially not because I'm all wrong. The time is now because. The time is now because. Even before I was conceived in my mother's womb. Even before I was conceived in my mother's womb. In the natural. In the natural. God said. God said, one day, one day he, said, he said, let there be life, let there be life in, the natural. in the natural. And I come to you as a vessel of God, declaring that he is saying today, let there be life in the spirit. Let there be life in the spirit. And it is so. And it is so. Because God said it. Because God said it. And it is so. And it is so. Because God said it. Because God said it. I now. I now. Have spiritual life. Have spiritual life. Leading my natural life. Leading my natural life. Meaning. Meaning. I'm in the second heaven. I'm in the second heaven. Give God.
God a hand, praise and thank you for your second heavenly experience.